Hey guys, so about four months ago, my daughter had seen uh, with a couple of her friends what she described as a dog man. I am at that location right now. I've only been here twice in my entire life. It's a pretty creepy environment. Um, once again, I live in upstate New York, the Adirondacks, actually the foothills of the Adirondacks. So we have a ton of woods around us. Um, but her and her friend's encounter happened in a cemetery. And I am at this cemetery now. Um, kind of a historical fact of this cemetery is a survivor of the Titanic is actually buried here. Um, they were on that boat when it crashed and survived. And then uh, apparently they were from my hometown. And when they passed away, they put a uh, commemorative plaque on their gravestone. I don't know if I can find it, but I want to share this encounter with you guys where it took place. So apparently they were at the cemetery doing what 17 year old kids do it's a very large cemetery um, it goes on for miles it's just huge it has a pond um, there's woods all I don't know if you can see the Adirondack Mountains in the background but it's just deep here um, so I guess like here's some of the you know, I mean, this isn't that old, but I mean, we're, we're talking old. <laughs> um, so I guess they were down by the pond and <clears throat> which I'll go over shortly too. Um, there's a veterans area of this cemetery and they were once again doing what 17 year old kids do. And they kept, ah, actually they were right there, right over here. Um, they were doing what kids their age do. Uh, something I really, I don't know, I don't approve of, but what, well, I can't stop them. But anyway, um, they started having a bunch of weird things happen. Uh, it's a pretty big print, but I doubt anything of anything. Um, so they started to just hang out um they were kind of had a creepy feeling uh around them and i guess what happened next was they heard some kind of noise in the background and um it, it was nighttime probably eight o'clock not too late and uh, so they looked, um, and next thing they know, they kind of saw a silhouette of what they can only describe as a dog man a little ways away. Uh, this cemetery also is reported to be haunted. Uh, people have seen a lot of orbs, which actually my daughter and her friends did see orbs. I'm going to try to get down to that location in a minute so to finish the encounter so I'm at the location where they were hanging out and it's a pretty creepy area um, I'll flip the camera around a little better in a second uh, now these two stones here these two uh, catacombs are the founding fathers of my town. They're actually built, one is built into a hill. Um, but this is where they were. So hang on one second, let me flip the camera around. So they were probably over in this area. And as you can see, it's built into the wall of the hill. Now I was just up there, right up in there. Uh, so they were down here doing whatnot and I guess over in that area is when they saw a silhouette of something um, excuse me over in that area and it looked like a dog man 
Um, now, a lot of people in this area, I since this has happened, I've talked to a couple of people, um, have heard some weird screeches and howls around this area. Um, so they're watching this creature move. It's not paying any attention to them. It's almost like it doesn't know they're there. And it kind of hops through um, and proceeds to just go into the woods. Now, those woods, there's one road that goes just past those woods, and then it goes deep into the heart of the Adirondacks. Um, so it has an endless running area. I mean, like I said, the cemetery is huge. It's a perfect stomping ground for a dog man. You got a pond right here. I'm sure there's lots of rabbit and other things, deer. Um, you know, I mean, and it's cold today. This is this is creepy. I mean, if I was here at night at their age, I'd be a little creeped out. So anyway, it takes off and runs. So they're back standing here in this area, and they start seeing kind of like these orbs these greenish orbs then they kind of see what they describe as like greenish lasers like uh, rifle lasers not saying that it was but that's just how they 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 told me um, her boyfriend was the one who told me it and you know my daughter isn't big into cryptids she believes but she's not big into it she's more into like uh, ghost hunting and stuff like that and so she is a believer but she never thought in a million years she'd see something so this is where the location happened that's what happened and as you can see it's it's pretty dense I mean I've literally drove around the cemetery for 15 20 minutes to try to find this location and that's how big it is it's probably a good 15 acres of woods and hills, ponds, streams. It's pretty cool. So, the subscriber asked me to go do a location of it, and I did. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, sorry if it's not what you expected, but I just wanted to share the location. And that's creepy. I mean, come on, guys. That's a catacomb built right into the ground. So once again, uh, this is where my daughter had her encounter. I think this summer I'm gonna come out here and check it out. It is cold and windy out today. Um, really windy actually, so. But definitely a very creepy but interesting vicinity for a cemetery. Kind of one last departing shot of the cemetery. As you can see, there's lots of hills. This is just a small section of the cemetery. Today's second part of the upload is a subscriber submission. Hey Jeff, my name is Nikki. I grew up around southwest and central Oklahoma. I'm currently located in southeast Oklahoma. I've noticed your channel covers a variety of things, and I've always felt compelled to share similar experiences. And my typical Virgo know-it-all insight apologies for whenever I do that in comments. I really don't mean to offend anybody by it. Anyhow, I am starting to lose memories that have been deeply rooted over the past almost four decades of my life. I consider trying to record them for my son and nephews and me in case I forget. Let me start with the first one, which is more paranormal and spirit-related than cryptid. At the age of two years old, 1984, I began telling my mom about an event that occurred with consistent details. I can remember, though less vividly now, lying on the bed, the bottom bunk. I vaguely recall my mom being in the doorway and seeing the hall light and the brown paneling on the walls. She closed the door, 
I believe. I remember being closed in and terrified. I had my bed to the left of the doorway against the wall beside the window opposite the door. I can see the entire room from where my head was positioned, and the curtains flowing in the breeze as my window was open. I suddenly had a very bad feeling, and in my peripheral vision I saw a figure coming into my window. I clenched my covers to my chest and tried not to move or breathe, but I could hear my heart pounding in my ears and couldn't seem to keep my breath in. I knew he must have heard me. A man stepped into my room facing the door and had a small knife in his right hand, which I could see. He stopped and looked at me. My breathing was heavy, though I tried not to breathe and was petrified. He had blonde hair, a scary smile, a blue t-shirt, and jeans slightly worn. I can't remember his shoes anymore or what happened after this. Apparently, I told my mom more, and his name, ironically, he told me, was Freddy. Yeah, I know. I don't remember when Nightmare on Elm Street came out, but I was too. My dad was never around. My mom literally cleans the house, talks on the phone, and cooks. We had a small black and white television with rabbit ears that I can't remember ever being on. Mind you, I'm not remembering all of my two-year-old life, but... We didn't have much going on for me to be exposed to this movie. I can tell you that we lived on a dead-end dirt road with a row of three or four trailer homes. This window was too high off the ground for anyone to be able to climb into. This man haunted my dreams for years, and I hate to admit it, but he has shown up a few times in my adult life. And even though I know that he is dead, I still feel that panic and run to lock the door. Many years later, my dad explained to me that at a different section of tracks, his friend, who had borrowed his favorite shirt, was hit by the train while crossing the tracks on his motorcycle. I can't remember his name, but I don't believe it was Freddy. I do know he passed while wearing my dad's shirt, though. And if I've learned anything about spirits is they can lie and be whatever they want and have ways of traveling a lot of people aren't aware of. My mother checked around to see if anyone had been outside or came in. She checked to see if there were any escaped convicts or anything going on. Finally, she went to see a psychic in the city of Lawton named Boots. She gave my mom candles and oil and told her to pray. It would help for a while, but it never lasted. He, Freddy, would appear in my dreams, and he would taunt me. He would be taking women and even trying to take my mom. He was a very bad man. I remember seeing body parts in jars. I would see houses full of people, and as I grew older, realized these were parties. This man was some kind of serial killer in my dreams. Whenever I see him now, he is usually walking around a corner, to the back door or whenever I happened to be. It happened at my old house, a client's home, and last I saw him standing across my front yard next to a three-tiered planter my dad built and I brought from my old house. He was staring toward the kitchen window where I was doing dishes. According to Boots, he died on the railroad tracks outside of Apache, Oklahoma, which was nearby. She explained to my mother that I was sensitive or vulnerable to spirits, and they were drawn to me. She said that would happen to me all of my life, and it has. I even have to avoid crowds and a lot of people because of their spiritual garbage. I've had some uneventful phases in my life, but I've seen and experienced a lot growing up in the area I did. We had strange creatures and apparitions, which others had also witnessed when they were present. My youngest brother has some stories, as do my friends. I could probably write a really strange autobiography, maybe the memoirs of Nikki. Most recent cryptid sightings that I could sum up briefly 
I was moving belongings across the state and had gotten pulled over in Krebs, Oklahoma, speed trap worth avoiding for anyone who doesn't know. Great Italian food as well. Anyway, I share that because it's the only time I got pulled over and got a ticket. So that date is my first Bigfoot sighting. And I don't even know what date it happened. It was around 3 in the morning. I had my puppy in the car and was tired and anxious about arriving at our cabin near the Talamena Drive, about another 45 minutes away. So I was wasn't super happy with the officer who pulled me over and gave me a ticket considering there was no one on the road and I didn't even notice the speed limit sign and had been looking to make sure that I was not speeding. By the time I had gotten to my driveway, which is unmarked and surrounded by trees on a mountain highway, I was surprised I could even find it. It's a pretty steep slope with loose gravel and narrows as it crosses the wet weather creek. This is shrouded in trees. Now, I have to tell myself here to give you some idea how terrifying this place has been at times. It feels like the darkness wants to just swallow you, or at least reach out and grab you and tear you to shreds. On many nights, I have actually climbed out my sunroof with a flashlight and checked all around as thoroughly as possible before climbing down to unlock this gate. With a wooden log fence on either side, it is difficult to get back into the car in a hurry. I was on the edge and hyper-vigilant most nights. There are no security lights. I don't like having those lights and wish they hadn't ruined the night sky with their stupid phone towers blinking nonstop. For a while, the newest one was literally a strobe light. Tell me that's not scary. We have a pair of mountain lions that frequent the property. Yes, a pair, perhaps a mother and an adolescent cub. And they liked being on the roof of the cabin and crossing paths with me twice. We have wolves, coyotes, a mama bear, and cubs, all kinds of creatures. Interesting thing happened. As I got there this particular early a.m., I used the door and unlocked the gate with no problem and was stunned by the thing that I had seen. Not even five yards away, I saw what appeared to be very much like a gorilla standing upright with long, shiny black hair reflecting my car brights. He wasn't bothered. He was calm as he walked across from the fruit trees to the left, very muscular like King Kong. I watched in utter amazement at what I was seeing and 100% believing without question. Yes, Bigfoot is real, and that is a flesh-and-blood creature. In fact, this guy looks more like a gorilla than expected. It didn't take him many strides before he vanished, before even reaching the creek on the far side. He was easily nine feet tall. I felt calm. And unthreatened, it was an oddly comforting moment for me as a single mom alone in the woods where people go missing, and most believe it's these meth-cooking operations to blame. I was later considering that he was distracting me and leading me away from his family. I knew for a fact there were three from my first overnight visit at the cabin. The other two sounded female to me. Bonus that left me scratching my head. I was running late for work or some appointment and trying to get my Bluetooth connected, so I stopped right aside of my gate. As I started to approach the wet weather creek, I saw what I first thought was a squirrel. Then it dawned on me that this thing was standing upright and running on two legs across the driveway. I looked more closely, and it had shorter arms. It was more of an olive color and had a tail of a lizard. It swayed back and forth as this thing ran on its back legs across my driveway into the creek bed. I thought to myself, we don't have lizards like that. Wait, what kind of lizard was that? It reminded me of some things I had heard and I did an unsuccessful internet search. I was driving on the highway not far from my driveway when I saw this same thing or a different one. Again, my first thought was squirrel, but I went through the same process. 
That thing could take pretty long strides and never seemed terribly fast for me to be able to see it that well. And the tail that sways behind it is something else. The head made me think of dinosaurs after I saw this second time. I actually asked my friend, who is a real estate agent and walks all these rural properties and photographs them, if he would keep his eyes open and try to get one on his camera. He has photographed little squatches in the trees on his family's property. Those have lighter skin and very human-like faces, but are covered in black hair on their heads and bodies. He lives pretty far out, not too terribly far from where they hold the annual Bigfoot Festival in Honabaya, Oklahoma, and apparently that is pronounced Honubi. So, this is a variety that maybe you can pick from, but I've got some other stories. Today's third part of the upload. A real-life dogman encounter. Encounter 1, my dad was young and used to be a DJ. He was in his friend's house when his friend left him home in the house. A tall dog-headed man-bodied creature came out of the kitchen, chased him. He fell, leaving out of the door, and it grabbed his heel before he kicked free. Now, you may say maybe it was his friend that scared him. Possibly, but how do you explain his second? My dad, much older now, went into his basement to look for something. He noticed the box move. Boxes were stacked up. A dog-headed man-bodied creature steps from behind the boxes and chases my father up the stairs. He slams the door, and the thing hit the door. My oldest brother went to check but found nothing. The third encounter, my dad was a war vet. It is possible that he suffered from PTSD and maybe imagined the creature. What's strange is how what he has described is the same as what many others have described in their encounters. When my dad would sleep, sometimes he would have night terrors of vicious dogs trying to attack him. Could that have been the reason he saw the dogman creature while wide awake? Today's fourth part of the upload. I had this encounter when I was in my early teens, back in a time when I believed in werewolves. I wanted to believe I could become a werewolf. I would even go as far as howling late at night. I'm saying all of this because I'm not sure if it's somehow related to my encounter, but what I experienced I have no explanation for. One night I was sitting outside on the porch. We lived in the country, so I would stargaze. At first, it was the smell that caught me off guard. It smelled like rotting flesh. Then I heard crunching leaves and saw the shadow on fours walking toward me. I thought it was a deer at first, but as I was looking at it, I could determine that it was at least five to six feet tall on all fours, all black and had a white patch on its chest with white paws. It was sniffing the ground while walking toward me. I stared at it for what felt like minutes trying to figure out what this thing was. It looked like a huge dog, bigger than it should be. I screamed and ran inside. After doing this, I heard something scratching on the panel on the side of our house. I turned off all the lights and went to bed. The next day, I found a patch of hair about four by four near the area where I had seen this creature. It was strange, and I tried to do some research on what it would shed like that, but could find no answers. It didn't stop here. Not long after, I woke up one night and had a sudden urge to go to the window. I moved the curtains and saw two bright yellow eyes staring at me from the garage. I felt depression, hopelessness, and dread. It felt like I was in a trance where I lost all joy. I remember staring at this creature for a few moments before immediately turning around and going back to bed. I woke up the next morning not understanding why I did that and immediately ran out there with a flashlight. It was still dark. I tried to recreate the yellow eyes and figured it must have been a reflection, but I couldn't find a logical explanation not long after the experience. I found a shovel along with a six-foot hole dug under my garage. 
went to my mother asking why the landlord was digging under the garage. She was clueless as to what I was talking about. I also found knives from our kitchen stabbed into the walls of this garage with no explanation. We moved a year later, but I could smell the rotten flesh odor every morning before getting on the bus. I'm 29 now, and I've tried so hard to find answers for what I experienced, but I've got nothing. Today's fifth encounter. I was responding to a call in the middle of the Mojave Desert at around 10 p.m. on a lonely road that leaves to Pahrump, Nevada. As I was driving, I see to my left a human-like figure running through the desert. The man-shaped creature was all black and appeared to be running like 30 miles an hour. I turned on my lights and pointed in the direction, but it vanished. I freaked out a bit and called my girlfriend. And told myself, I'm new to the area, I'm just probably afraid and tripping out. I handle my call and forget what happened. Two weeks later, I respond to a call with my partner who was driving his own patrol car. My partner arrested the guy in the car, so I waited with the suspect car until a tow driver arrived. I sat in my car in the darkness, no biggie. I see the tow driver in the distance heading my way. As he arrives, the tow driver immediately comes to my car and says, Are you all right? I say, I'm fine. And he says, I wanted to come and check on you because I just saw a man running away from your car. I said, No, shut up, bro. He says, Yeah, it looked like a tall man wearing all black running full speed away from your car. I tell him to get into my car and... He and I will go search for the guy, but we didn't see anything. At this point, I go back to the office and share my experiences. They think I'm crazy. A few weeks go by. I'm on a call for a traffic collision with parties ejected. After clearing the scene, I walk back to my car. I hear some screams for help near my car. I start to yell, where are you? And point my flashlight. I see nothing. A partner who was near me also heard them. We both go searching, but the screams stop, and we never found anything. Today's bonus encounter. This is one of many things I have never told anyone before because I'm pretty sure that nobody would believe me, thinking that my imagination was just wild and still doubting that anyone is going to believe me now, but somehow I do remember it happening for real. This thing happened to me in the past when I was around nine, and I always used to hang out with my cousin. He was seven back then, and we were pretty inseparable at the time before everything changed when he turned 18. I was spending a night in my grandmother's house, as I used to be her personal dog sitter, and he decided to come hang out with me before he suggested a good idea to go into the nearest forest, which was almost next to her house. We lived in a medium-sized city, but the forest is almost always near buildings at some parts of the area. Around 10 or 11 p.m. to just walk around the edge of the forest since it would be foolish to go deep into the forest that late. I nodded and told him that would be a good idea since we were bored and feeling adventurous. So we headed out and just started walking toward the edge of the woods and have a small adventure, but that doesn't last even an hour before the weird things start happening. I remember when I was standing against a large tree and looking just in front of me while my cousin was near my side, maybe six or seven inches away, and seemed to be searching something, which is unclear what exactly, but when I was looking in front of me, I saw red eyes staring at me out of nowhere. But they were far away from us, and I turned toward my cousin and asked if he was seeing what I was seeing right now, but he just ignored my question, so I turned back to look at the eyes, and they were closer than before. I blinked a few times, of course. I couldn't see anything around them, and they were not getting closer. I only saw trees, and turned back to him, asked the same question, but he kept ignoring me, so I turned one last time to look at them, to see they were getting closer. I just kept watching them, feeling a little bit afraid at this moment, and I swear they started to come towards me, even when I wasn't looking away and quickly looking back. 
I just grabbed my cousin's hand and ran as fast as we could with him until we saw street lamps. After that, I never saw or experienced anything like that again. Funny thing is that I never heard anything let out any kind of noise when approaching. Even if there would have been a lot of branches on the ground, it was the size of a wolf, and this thing has been bothering me and just made me question myself like, what would have happened if we didn't run away? What if we just stood there to find out what this thing was? Even if it's been 16 years since it's happened, these memories are burned in my brain. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's upload as much as I enjoyed sharing it with you. Um, definitely a very interesting uh, cemetery to go to. I uh, wish it was a little warmer. I wanted to go there last week when it was 50 before the snow and cold hit us again. I think this summer, like I said, maybe late spring, early summer, I'll go on an outing there. Um, maybe do a little cryptid hunting, ghost hunting, whatever. Definitely a very cool cemetery, though. I cannot believe I've lived here my entire life and have never been through the entire cemetery, but my 17-year-old daughter has. Anyway, some good stories, great day, a couple more days till Christmas. I hope everyone enjoyed this one, because I did, and please be kind to each other, and may the Great Spirit watch over all of us and guide us through our path of life. Until tomorrow, my friends, farewell.